Hey, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to my cybersecurity show. And in today's episode, we are bringing an end to our apprentice track in the Port Swigger Web Security Academy lab walkthrough series that we have been enjoying so very much. I know I sure have. Hopefully you have as well. But today is the last lab in the apprentice series, and we're going to get straight to it because it's another one of our favorite things, which is a SQL injection. And there it is, another SQL injection. And this time it allows for a login bypass. If you see a web login, you're like, hey, I don't really have a username and password, but it'd be awesome if you'd let me log in as that admin. That's what I'm talking about. How you feeling? Huh? And it goes, well, if you give me the right thing, which could be a SQL injection, you might be able to bypass that not knowing an actual credential thing. And you go, well, really, how do I know whether or not that works? Well, we test for it, right, as we do. So let's see what they got here. This lab contains a SQL injection. Spoiler alert, right? Uh, it's in the login function. To test the lab, perform a SQL injection attack that logs into the application as the administrator user, as we see right there. Administrator user. All right, I've hit the lab. This is one janky lab. It does like to freak out on me. So we're going to kind of go through this as quickly as possible because I've had it just wig out on me a couple of times. It was actually the third time I've tried to film this. <laughs> and it, it just dies. It's been dying. So let's get through it quickly. We have landed on the shop. We want to go to the My Accounts, which is right around this uh, area here. Click on that link. It takes us to the fun stuff. I'm already feeding this through Burp, by the way, because we're going to get to that. I'm not going to actually use Burp here because I don't need to, but we're going to get to Burp in just a second for some extra, a little extra. Uh, here we have the login form. By the way, yes, you can use SQL injections to uh, potentially bypass logins on web applications. Don't now take this information, run out to every web login you find and try SQL injection attacks against them to see if you could bypass a login. That's, that's not how this works. Don't do that. We only use these skills to test on machines we own or we have permissions to test on, like the Web Security Academy lab here. Okay? There's bug bounty programs out there. There's, you know, large scoped uh, responsible disclosure programs. Go find those if you want to work in real life land with permission. But you got to have permission. Okay? We're good? Right? I ain't, got, I ain't got to go any further. Don't run with scissors. And don't hack on stuff that you don't have permission to hack on. All right. Now that that's said, I did this one time and somebody was like, my boyfriend saw what you did and was trying to like log into Instagram using a SQL injection. And I'm like, no, no, do not do that. All right. So, uh, username, obviously they said admin is Straytor, Straytor, and you can kind of see that the, the uh, login here is already kind of filled out, giving you the uh, spoiler alerts there at the bottom. But let's just kind of take our way through it. Let's, let's work our way through it so we understand this. So, I know that the username is administrator. It might be admin, right? I might have to do some further testing. It might be something else, root, uh, you know, super user, who knows, right? Uh, we've got a password. We we don't have the password, actually. So I'm just going to lean on the keyboard. I want to just see what this does. I'm testing. So I log in. No, I don't need you to save that. Thanks. And uh, no thanks there. But I get an invalid username and password. Okay, no problem. And I could try things like password one and so on and so forth. That might be one of the first stages if I was actually testing against this thing. Try some low-hanging fruit. Is administrator one two three four five six going to work? You know, the top 15 or 20 um, most commonly used passwords. Can I just easily guess my way through this? If that doesn't work, okay. Maybe now I'm looking for that SQL injection. All right. So let's try administrator. And I'm going to throw a single quote on that. Come down here in the password field. And I can hit login because my password might be nothing, but it might complain about that. Oh, it does. Please fill out this field, right? So there's... Probably, you know, it looked like JavaScript or something was causing that alert. So it says, no, please fill out that field. Okay, so I got to put something in there. I don't really care at this point about the password. Let's just go hit log in. All right, I'm not going to save. Maybe I can hit never save. That would, that would be awesome. And then, ooh, I got this internal server error. Ooh, that's interesting. 
I didn't get, hey, bad username and or password. A lot of times they get a little verbose and they're like, hey, that was the bad password for the administrator user. Oh, it was the administrator, not admin. Cool. Good to know. They get a little verbose from time to time and kind of uh, tip the hand, as it were, on what's going on. But I'm getting internal server error which lets me know that I'm probably injecting SQL. When I put that single quote in there, it probably went, hey, uh, you just jacked up my SQL statement. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Let's go back to Lab Home. Go back to my accounts. And now we'll just try the good tried and true or one equals one, you know, easy peasy SQL statement. Yes, I don't need you to do that. I just want, I wanted this to do this. There we go. So we'll put in administ admin is straight or and then single quote and of course or one equals one and we'll give it a dash dash inline comment character that's what it's called might be an octothorpe might be a dash dash space dash might be a dash dash space there's a couple of them that it very well may be okay so if that doesn't work in real life land you try the others. Lean on the keyboard for the password and log in and wait for it. Congratulations. We have solved the lab. Now we've reached the end of that. Now that's a simple way to do it, right? Someone uh, so graciously uh, pointed out in the last SQL injection episode that I did wrote in the comments and I'm absolutely right. They were hundred percent correct that it's usually not this easy. It might be. It could be, right? You might just, but it usually is not that simple to, because we have web application firewalls that are looking for SQL injections, or maybe it's just a little more robust or different of an environment than the just simple, straight up, easy peasy. Maybe they're using a different database in the back end. And therefore you need a different inline comment character, or you need a different way to do this. Maybe the statement is, formed in such a way that that simple or one equals one isn't going to work. Maybe we can try something else. And yeah, you could do that manually, but programmatically is so much better. And that's where Burp Suite is going to come back into play. Now I jumped out to uh, GitHub. This is a uh, payload list, a SQL injection payload list repository that I've used in the past with uh, decent success. It's just got a bunch of lists that kind of walk you um, or allow you to feed into your automation. SQL map or you know, Burp Suite Intruder for working your way quickly, automatically, through trying to do SQL injections for things like exploitation or detections or whatever. Right? And it kind of gives you a really good rundown of what SQL injection is and how that works and the different types. So it's a really good resource if you're wanting to learn more about SQL injections. And then it tells you some great tools for doing SQL injections. And then here's some generic SQL injection payloads. And you can just copy this and paste it. I've actually already downloaded the generic list uh, right here, generic SQLI text. And I can just, I'll uh, just head generic and it'll give us the first few. Like we can see here that we're getting like uh, one that has an X equals X, another true false statement kind of thing going on. And it's using some URL encoding for the spaces instead of just having them plain because you might run into that. Maybe you need to do URL encoding, right? But this, I can just now feed this list into Burp Suite Intruder, right? And come in here, grab that post for the login. Let me get my magnifier up here. Uh, no, it's down here. Da Ding. Uh, what was it? Magnus? Is that the one I like to use? We'll see. Hey, no, that's not the one. I like KMag, I think is what it is. KMag, yeah. This one's actually not too bad for a Linux magnifier. Works pretty well. So, let's get this out of the way. Am I not getting it out of the way? Hello, KMag. Well, you're in my way. Anyway, so... Oh, I'm grabbing the wrong spot. There we go. There's your login right there. So post login. And I would just right click on this and send to intruder. Uh, thank you, K-Man. You can take a break. Go to intruder. And from there, hit that, you know, find that spot where you'd want to hit this good stuff. Now, we've already got it filled in right here. But 
what I could do is just grab that and back it up and then just hit like a single quote and kind of fill that in and grab that and hit add. Now I've got a place to do it, like a parameter or position. Go to payloads and then just like load my file, which is generic SQL. Hit open. And now you notice I've got all these lovely SQL injections that I can now automatically hit start attack and see if they work, right? So just another way to do it a little more in depth using an actual tool that Port Swigger obviously builds. And uh, you, if you're using the community edition, just get prepared to sit and wait quite some time because it's throttled. If you got that Burt Pro license though, that's the ticket because that's going to run super fast and that'll be a whole lot better. And you can look through that and skim through the results and look for what might look like. Maybe there's a size difference in as far as the return and the data size or a response. You know, you, you get, you know, 403s versus a, uh, or not for like a, yeah, so 400s that give you like, Hey, that's a, that's a bad no, no, that, that didn't work. Just want to look for those differences. Maybe you get a 200, maybe there's a redirect. Who knows? Look for what the differences are, and that could lead you to, hey, my SQL injection might have worked there. Let me try that in the login form and see if that gets you any farther than you already got. All right, so there it is. Our last one. This has been a lot of fun. Like I said, I've really enjoyed it. Maybe I'll do more in the future. It has been a lot uh, of time-consuming effort, though. Hopefully you've gotten a lot out of it. And if you did, if you enjoyed the series and you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor to increase the reach. Do that whole like and subscribe thing. Share it and let people know. Comment in. Give me some engagement. And that will help the YouTube algorithms and all the other algorithms that take the stuff and try to give it to other people. And you think, hey, you might, you might like this. Hitting that thumbs up is one of the best things you can do for the channel. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. And until next time, keep hacking.